St. Marceline is one of the easiest cheeses we've made so far. If you're from the States, you might not have heard of this cheese, but if you're from France, you probably know what it is. This cheese gets its reputation from its soft rind and its creamy fondue-like interior. In fact, it is so creamy that it is commonly aged in small terracotta pots to avoid a slip rind where the cheese contents ooze out. If that doesn't make you want to make this, I don't know what will. Traditionally, this cheese was made from raw goat's milk to allow a more lactic and acidic taste. But now it is made with raw cow's milk, which is what I'll be using today. This cheese follows the same process as many others we make. The milk is heated to a temperature in which the cultures of the milk can thrive, then it is ripened with the starter culture. The thing that makes St. Marceline and some of the other cheeses like it so different is the way in which it is curdled. Some of the other cheeses that I made have a much faster curdle time of an hour. Marceline takes two whole days to curdle. This is achieved by putting in a much smaller dose of rennet than usual which makes the milk develop much slower. Then it is left out at room temperature. This slow thickening makes the end result cheese more acidic and sour like a goat's cheese. After the two-day process, we strain the cheese in a cheesecloth. We're left with a yogurt-like consistency that we drain for a day to release the whey. From what I've learned, the reason that cow's milk is not traditionally used for this cheese is that during the curdle, the cream of the milk will separate to the top while the goat's cream will not. This results in tiny buttery bits in the cheese. In my opinion, that's not a bad thing. The following day, it had taken on an interesting shape. Either way, it's time to salt. Since the curds are knitted together, I'm breaking them up to salt the interior. Then I'm letting it sit for another day to let the salt suck out the moisture and cure the cheese, kind of like what we do when we cure our meat. The next day, it was time for the cheeses to be potted, or whatever you want to call it. While I was putting the curds into the pots, I wanted to do a little taste test. And I'll just say, it was delicious. Creamy, salty, acidic, slightly sour. It was kind of similar to a goat's cheese, except without that extra funk. We could have skipped the aging process and just ate it that week and it would have been amazing. But I still wanted to see this fondue-like interior that I'd heard about. After the cheeses had been packed into the pots, we left them in a room to cure to help a coat of fungus known as Geotrichum candidum take over the cheese. This culture is one of the few that gives brie, camembert, and many other cheeses like it their bloomy rinds. After the cheeses develop their coat, they're finally ready to be put into the cave. I may take some of the lids off to see how they age differently over time. I was hoping that after a couple of weeks of aging, they would have more of a wrinkly rind like some other cheeses that I'd seen. So I don't really know if I did something wrong or if it's still to come. Either way, the cheese is smelling great and you can already see it's a little bit more creamy on the sides. I'm only a couple weeks in, but once it's finished, the best way to serve it is by putting it in an oven for a couple of minutes until the contents are warm and melted. Then to use it as a dip for crackers and bread, which is what I'm looking forward to the most. 